In this video we are going to talk about the top 8 insane courtroom freakouts after sentencing. So before starting this video like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel Adify for future updates. It is generally true that law and order are in charge in courtrooms, as they should be. There are, however, times when it can become spooky, crazy, and downright unpredictable. When you take into account what is at risk, it is not difficult to comprehend why. Here are the top 8 insane courtroom freakouts after sentencing. Number 8. Alan Miller McCarty. A man had to be dragged from a courtroom because, according to him, he has the right to remain sitting anytime he chooses and that he cannot be forced to stand up. And right now he wants to watch this prosecutor in person to understand what a bunch of idiotic pieces you are when you threaten my life. Alan Miller McCarty received a 20-year prison sentence, and as soon as he received the sentence, he started to freak out. That man in the well had harsh words for the judge, saying that he wasn't really performing his job. It seems that there was no representation from a lawyer in the comic. The prosecutor's unborn kid was threatened by Cardi, a Florida native who was initially in court for a child custody dispute. McCarty was sentenced to 20 years in jail for making the judge's life in danger. That has to be the worst decision ever made. Number 7. Chantel Jackson. Chantel Jackson, who appeared in court for sentencing, kept turning around to the family of the person he killed and screaming, I hate you, possibly to a friend or family member. He kept trying to turn around and smile at the family, but the courtroom's officers had to restrain him. At the sentencing, deputies were keeping an eye out for Jackson turning towards the Potter family when it all began. The video of Jackson's conviction from February was presented today by the prosecution. Simply put, he exhibits zero regret. Due of his acts and lack of regret, Sean Dell is attempting to elicit further responses from the family. He received a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Number 6. Akiva McRae. We think it's always difficult to appear in court with the murderer, a family member, or a friend. Well, you're about to witness convicted murderer Akiva McRae being led back to jail while facing his family and friends in the courtroom. Is this really the case? We can understand the police officer telling the family and friends in the courtroom to calm down, but what if you were in their position? But instead maybe instead of the officers yelling at the families they could have just you know, left them alone, allowed them to compose themselves, give them some time instead of just yelling at them like they're the convicts herself like you're, you're not allowed to have any emotions. We would have so much anger we are not sure how we would be able to just sit there quietly while the convict goes about his life, his life is behind bars. Family members crowded into the courtroom at Kenyatta Bar. Number 5. Markeith Lloyd. In the courtroom, we see a felon who was being closely guarded by police officers. You're about to witness Florida native Markeith Lloyd, who was accused of murdering his pregnant ex-girlfriend and an Orlando police officer. Markeith Lloyd tried to represent himself in court because he has no respect for the law or law enforcement. In the courtroom, though, Lloyd began to lose his mind over the prosecutor's attorneys. It was not advisable to choose to defend yourself because Lloyd was in danger of receiving the death penalty. And after declaring himself to be his own attorney during that court proceeding, we saw additional footage of another lengthy court proceeding where the judge sternly admonished the defendant to defend himself by hiring an attorney. He finally did, but that is absurd. Well, Lloyd claims he wasn't the perpetrator. The only evidence at this time is shell casings that confirm the same gun used to shoot his ex-girlfriend and the police officer, and the gun was discovered near the location of his arrest. There were many guns that were fired that day. So, it is the current connection. Imagine that this man didn't commit the crime but is now facing the death penalty and this is how the courtroom treats him. The reason he was wearing what looked like a bodysuit may have been to help restrain him. We are confident that they will discuss more DNA evidence because this man faces the death penalty. Number 4. That man is enormous. And that is an understatement. If he were my cellmate, we would follow his orders without question. As a result, a man from Miami, Florida, who was present for a hearing on mental health, became alarmed when he saw television cameras around. Food stamps are so very helpful to this king count. We don't want to share a cell with that criminal. 
In red rather than orange, Chad Elbert appears better. Number 3. What transpired is unclear. Let's now clarify what occurred in the Hamilton County Courthouse. The jury just declared Jones to be Roderick Beta. This is BS, according to the man you just saw or Roderick. That's BS. When the verdict was announced, the policeman immediately pulled out his taser and case baits reacted badly to the news. After the conviction, the two men's supporters were in a panic because they couldn't believe that they had been accused of murder. The two men were barely able to support themselves. Number 2. A murderous lunatic. You have 42 days to file an appeal after being remanded to the Department of Corrections custody for serving this sounds. In the event that this scenario were to occur in real life, we're quite sure the judge would be the last person you'd want to target. Although they just handed down a punishment, you are the one who committed the crime, so if you're ready to commit the crime, that is. Now this judge can just add more time, perhaps he felt as though his life was in danger. If found guilty of threatening a judge and found to have disobeyed police officers, that would be serious time to have served. Number 1. A mad lady. Okay, well, did that woman just take off? Let me go, let me go. This woman, in our opinion, was attempting to fly away from all of her issues. She was flitting around as if the woman were being evaluated for mental stability. We are not experts by any means, but based on our assessment, we believe it is safe to declare that she is not mentally fit. Just as the previous physician failed to offer a diagnosis. She said that. They simply didn't enjoy her. Then, one physician suggested that she might be bipolar. That assessment, in our opinion, is accurate. First and foremost, we have a dangerous prisoner. When entering the courtroom, he had to be restrained. He had to wear a spit guard over his head and was bound to a wheelchair. And this individual was actually constantly surrounded by the SWAT team. Your astonishment at what we were unaware that a man who was firmly bound to a wheelchair was nevertheless sufficiently hazardous to require the presence of a SWAT team in court, complete with tactical masks and shields, because the SWAT team alone was insufficient. There are a lot of police officers present in the courtroom as well. Who is this man, then? That was Sean Ricker, and this is how he appears beneath all of that. He kind of looks like a normal guy, but Ricker has threatened everyone and anyone, and he was given a 200-year prison sentence. We must admit that his criminal history is pretty extensive at the moment, but to mention a few, we believe he was found guilty of 16 offenses, including first-year sexual assault of a kid, physical abuse of a child, and reckless endangerment due to his violent tendencies. He was given a maximum security term, and we predict he will be placed in solitary confinement because, given how he seemed in court, there is no way officials could have believed he would be safe among other prisoners. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.